I'm mm -hmm. standing on the already existing protocol. On behalf of the Pro Tem Committee and the Organizing Committee of our lecture series, I want to introduce our first lecture titled Impacting Professionalism on Real Estate Educators. This lecture series is in line with the vision of the President and Council in establishing the Women's Wing to make us a formidable team that will uplift our institution to foster you Wow, network. Is it network? With our foundation, those working in the state and federal processes, and for those. Wow, wow. This is our mental. Yeah. The network is bad. Network. Can you hear me? We didn't hear. We've not been Hello. hearing you. We just stopped okay, hearing sorry. you. Sorry. I said. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I know my my network went off. I'm sorry about that. I okay. said we still have two more lectures. One for those working in state and federal parastatals, and for those working in private organizations. The overall aim of this lecture series, series is to examine the problems, prospects and solution, and proper solutions to the problems. We cannot cover all this in just one lecture. We just have two hours for this lecture. But it is a starting point that our successors will build on. Today, we have three seasoned, well-established professionals and educators that will do justice to today's topic. Let us listen and learn from their wealth of experience and advice. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you so much for that um, well-captured um, address. And uh, we are all in here for what we want to learn about impacting professionalism in real estate educators. We have um, three season as she introduced them earlier on, we have three seasoned educators who have gone through things and things and professionals who are going to talk to us about that. But before that, we want to welcome, I think the next, the next item on our, on our agenda is to, can you, be, can you be flashing that agenda please so that others will really know. The IT man please, flash it a little bit so that we know the next thing on our agenda. I think it should be to, uh, a little speech from our second vice. Yes, speech by the nice second vice president. We want to, at this juncture, welcome, our, well, our second vice president in the person of ESV, Victor Alonge, a seasoned professional, we all know him. He is our second vice president. We want to welcome him to, to address us. Sir, you are welcome. I hope he has hooked in his... The, 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 the second VP is not online now. Oh. He's not with us. Okay, so we can go on. Okay, but our, but our dear president is with us. So maybe we will now listen to our president. Too. Yes, the president is around. Okay, sir. Okay. Um, please, our president, we want to have a standing ovation for you as we welcome our able president, the president of, um, is that the 40th? I'm sorry. The president of the Ni Nigerian Institution of Estate Surveyors and Valuers in the name of ESV Chief Emmanuel Okaswiki. Please welcome him. 
noble colleagues, let us welcome him with a standing ovation. Although people are sitting down, but with a standing ovation, please. Thank you that, so much. Thank you, thank you very much, Jovita. Yes. Um, the chairman of the welcome, sir. committee and other members of the committee, noble colleagues. Um, I don't know whether the first vice is first vice online because I was told that the second vice is not around. But if the first vice is there, let me also recognize him and also recognize other council members that are on this platform for this lecture. First of all, let me congratulate the women's wing for this noble idea they, they have initiated. One of the things we actually intend to do this year is what you have already started doing, and that is to train and retrain, not just only on estate surveying and valuation, but on other aspects of our lives. And I'm happy that you have some seasoned, experienced people that can actually take us around on this uh, topic that you have already initiated. Secondly, let me say that it's, uh, it's a good thing that we have started this week. Um, the council in our last meeting um, is still tinkering on the actual name to be called. But I have seen that people have taken nice women's wing. And I can assure you that the council is trying to ensure that this particular um, arms of the institution are being recognized legally by registering it with uh, CAC. Um, before the next council meeting, I'm sure that uh, we'll be able to give you a report on that. Let me also thank you people for governizing your, the women of Naives together. Now, the essence is that, like I said during the inauguration, it's not political, it's rather professional. And I'm happy that you people have started on good notes. So I'm here to listen, <coughs> to learn, <coughs> and also to ensure that we are on the right track. Be rest assured that the council will give you all the support that you require to ensure that we move on from glory to glory, from strength to strength. And finally, let me also say that it is my desire that before I leave office, that this women's wing has solidified in such a way that we will not have any cause to begin to think of um, being, you know, regretting coming together as, uh, as members of the same profession, but also of the same sex, which is trying to ensure that whatever some of the peculiar challenges that the female members of our profession might have, that you'll be able to put it on the table and discuss. On the issue of your bylaw, uh, we are working on that. Um, we have sent that to the legal committee to vet for us. As soon as that is done and brought back to the council, we'll be able to let you know that that is the um, bylaw for the women's wing. But remember that in our last EGM, there was a template for all the uh, arms of the institution, which the uh, constitutional review committee submitted to us then. But we we'll, 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 look at that and the one that you have proposed, I will ensure that we tie the knots together and ensure that we'll have a women's wing that will be not just supportive, but will also, become, will also be there for the institution and for members of your wing. Thank you very much. And I wish you a successful deliberation. I wish you a successful lecture. I will also want to participate. I have another meeting by 11.30, but I think I will stay to listen and also to learn. But let me commend you for what you're doing. Thank you very much and God bless all of us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. That was a very nice speech from our president and encouraging one, so. So our ladies, our, we have a strong backbone from our president and the council members. So we are good to go. So that we, they will all support us in everything that we are doing that is right, that is not, the, 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 the mark there is that is not political, but to the growth of estate surveying and valuation in Nigeria. Thank you so much, sir, for that nice speech. So let, um, noble colleagues, we are good to go. As everybody is now ready to listen to the lectures that we're going to have today. Permit me now to, um, invite somebody that will read a citation of the first 
the first lecture we are, for today, remember, we are talking about impacting professionalism on real estate educators. And the first person to start off the lecture is in the person of Dr. Uche Eguatu. But before she comes in, we, I will humbly invite ESV Sandra Angoli Peter of the Unity Branch to come and read the citation of our able, well, I don't want to preempt her. Just come on and say this and read the citation. Thank you so much. I hope she's on. She's here. Yes. ESV Peter, thank you so much. All right. Good morning, everyone. Can the IT man please um, project that, please? Good morning, noble colleagues. I'm here to read the citation. My name is Sandra Peter, and I'm here to read the citation for Dr. Uche Eguatu. Eguatu. Dr. Uche Eguatu is a highly motivated and focused professional with significant experiences in the education and practice of estate surveying and valuation. She started her career as a lecturer in estate management at Cardinal Polytechnic, Cardinal, where she rose to the position of principal lecturer before taking a voluntary retirement from full-time academic services to corporate practice. She presently works as the senior partner in the consulting firm of Chica, Equity and Partners, Estate Surveyors and Valuers, where she heads the valuation and the R&D department. Her primary, primary application domain is valuation and property management, while her primary research domain bothers entrepreneurial real estate education and practice. Dr. Ute holds a master's degree in property valuation and management from Sheffield Hallam University, UK, and a PhD from the same university. Prior to the higher degrees, she had obtained a BSc in estate management from the University of Nigeria, Nsuka, Enugu campus, and a postgraduate diploma in education from the same university. She also holds a diploma in entrepreneurship and curriculum development from the IESE Business School, Barcelona, Spain. She is a professional member of Nigeria Institution of Estate Surveyors and Partners, having been elected as an associate of the institution in 1992 and elevated to the fellow cadre in 2005. She's duly registered with the Estate Surveyors and Partners Registration Board of Nigeria to, to practice the profession. She has served in several committees of the institution at various times as member of the Presidential Advisory Committee, Professional Practice Committee, Chairman, Nigeria Institution of Estate Surveyors and Fathers Code of Ethics Review Subcommittee, Vice Chairman, Education Committee, Chief Invigilator and Center Coordinator of NAIF's Professional Examinations and member of the NAIF's Learning Center and presently serves in the NAIF Education Committees. She is a board member and chairman of the Education Committee of Esvabon. Uche, Dr. Uche recently made a landmark achievement by being appointed a member of the International Valuation Standards Council, IVSC board, with effect from August 2021. She has to her credit several papers published in the national and international journals. Dr. Uche is married to Estee Survey and Valor Chika Iguatu, who is also a fellow of the institution. Thank you very much. Mewu, um, she let us welcome her with a round of applause. Thank you. Noble colleagues, noble ladies, welcome. Dr. Mrs. ESV Dr. Mrs. Uche Eguatu. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Esther. Thank you so much, Sandra. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, doctor. My name is uh, Uche Eguatu, and uh, I thank you for the privilege of letting me speak and share some ideas with us this morning. 
And I want to start by uh, greeting our noble president, our distinguished able president of the Nigerian Institution of Estate Surveyors and Valuers, Estate Surveyor and Valuer, Chief Ima Okas Wike, for finding time to be with us this morning. I want to also recognize the presence of the first and second vice presidents of our noble institution, the council members that have joined us, the noble pro tem executive of the women's wing of the Nigerian Institution of Estate Soils and Valuers. They have been so hardworking and making it possible for us to be here. The, my distinguished noble colleagues, the moderators, and ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for being here. And uh, what we are going to discuss this morning, the topic is impacting professionalism in real estate educators. And we will start by way of introduction to know who we are and why we are here. We belong to a profession, a noble profession, regulated by the Estate Surveyors and Valuers Registration Board of Nigeria. We also belong to the Nigerian Institution of Estate Surveyors and Valuers, which is a professional body of the, of the institution, professional body of estate surveying and valuation profession. And we are proud as women's wing to pay allegiance to the constitution of that um, association. We educate professionals. We are professional women. And we are members of the NILES women's wing, and we are friends and well-wishers of the association and the profession. And uh, we want to talk, talk about the estate surveying and valuation, education, and professionalism. What do we want to say about this? We want to understand who the real estate educators are and what professionalism is and why we need to impact professionalism in this set of people, the ways, ideas of how to impact such professionalism. And we just uh, conclude and take some questions. We start with what is professionalism? A professional is a person that is equipped with knowledge, skills, and competencies for a particular profession. Therefore, professionalism is, in real estate, estate, estate surveying and valuation in particular, is the application of such knowledge skills and competencies in solving estate surveying and valuation problems in the society. Details of such knowledge and um, skills and competencies is not within the scope of our, this our discussion, but suffice it to say that it includes, the skills includes various skill sets for the practice. You have valuation skill sets. You will need um, uh, business um, leadership skill sets, business enterprise skill sets, communication skill sets, and so many others. And uh, what that means is that professionalism entails attaining professional status in qualifications, experiences, and demonstration of such conducts that characterize a professional person in estate surveying and valuation in 
our case. And academics and professionals training, academic and professional training in estate surveying and valuation are provided by real estate educators. So who are real estate educators? There are lecturers who provide learning teaching assessment services to estate management students in the university. There are researchers who produce estate management knowledge and share such knowledge, such findings by way of discussing in conferences and uh, publishing for us to read and be educated in di diverse ways. It also includes those who teach in professional qualification, they teach candidates in professional qualification um, program to prepare them to take professional qualifying exams. They also include those who provide learning materials and study packs for online teaching and uh, teach in such online programs. In effect, these people are uh, operate in and outside classrooms. Some are within the classroom setting, others are in the industry, and others operate from virtual platforms. The next thing we look at now is why do we need to impact professionalism in real estate educators? What are the needs for professionalism in real estate educators? We have seen that real estate educators are not just those who lecture in the departments of estate management in the higher educational institutions, but they include all those who are involved in the academic and professional training of future real estate surveyors and valuers by virtue of their positions as lecturers or leaders in the learning of a profession-based discipline like estate management, they educate future professionals and should, them, should themselves be grounded in the skills and competencies required for the professional practice. Many of them are properly equipped with academic knowledge, but there is need to balance those with professional uh, skills and competencies. For instance, a real estate management lecturer at the university needs to be a professional to effectively teach students the secrets of professionalism in estate surveying and valuation. You need to be a professional to tell the students the success story of how you got there, how you became a professional, and direct them on how to follow your footsteps uh, to attend their professional career destinations. Real estate educators need to be impacted with professionalism to effectively teach future professionals because one cannot give out what he does not have. Experience has shown that some graduates of estate management and valuation do not want to continue with the profession after graduating from the universities. Could they are being taught by lecturers who have not been impacted by professionalism being a contributory factor? I leave us to think about that. Professionalism will also help the university lecturers to expose students to key skills for effective professional practice right from the university and by so doing, help young graduates to connect academic knowledge with the professional practice. By being professional themselves, real estate educators can therefore produce quality graduates of estate management that are well prepared for the world of work and invariably help mitigate the changes, the challenges of unemployment. Real estate educators need to have deep appreciation of the ideas, standards, and ethics of, of the profession. Impacting professionalism in real estate educators therefore meets this need as this will complement the academic training. 
and help to produce balanced graduates. Then we look at the ideas on how to impact professionalism in real estate educators. The starting point is to make yourself available as one who needs to be impacted with professionalism. And it starts with the person having what uh, you call the M MDT and uh, MMT. That is, make a decision today and make a move today. The interest starts from the real estate educator. Two, we have the keenly focused in attaining a professional qualification by participating in professional activities to have a deep appreciation of the professional ethics, conducts, and other principles that govern the profession. Promote staff industrial training programs for estate management lecturers in the highest institution setting if you are in a position to do so and participate in SEM. Uh, this applies mainly to those who have reached uh, the management level in the uh, institutions of higher learning. And uh, they can promote this so that other colleagues in the department will see the need uh, to be able to have such uh, training. Similar to item three above, that is uh, having a participating in staff industrial training is organize town and gown events. It's like a town hall event where experienced, um, experienced uh, real estate surveying and valuation professionals will be invited into the departments to share their experiences, their practical experiences and uh, industry experiences. And this will benefit everybody even those in the academies. Another one is work shadowing. Uh, very, work shadowing is a very effective means of impacting professionalism. And this involves like identifying professional role models in your area or areas of interest, and then make appointments to work shadow each of them. That is very effective because I participated in this and it helped a lot. Then persevere to the end by getting elected into the professional membership of the institution and be registered by the Estate Surveillance and Valuation uh, Registration Board to practice. And having qualified as a professional, be actively involved in professional activities by serving in the committees of the institution and participating in continuing professional development. Then set up a practice in partnership with other, with other uh, colleagues who are also qualified. And that will be a way of gaining professional practice experience. And then we shall look at the roots, the route for professional membership of the institution. Uh, and um, we have the various routes, starting from different grades of membership. You have a student grade at the lowest level. You have a graduate or a probationer level, and you have associates and uh, fellowship level, fellows of the institution. The associates and fellows of the institution are the professional member cadre. And uh, you have to get up to the associates to qualify to apply to the, to the Estate Surveillance and Valuers Registration Board to be a registered professional and to have license to practice. The process for a real estate educator to become a member um, depends on the level of qualification. The training is actually provided by the, by the Nigeria Institution of Estate Surveillance and Valuers. 
even though the Estate Surveyors and Valuers Registration Board is the body who is empowered by law to train, uh, regulate, to train, regulate, and monitor the events of the profession. The training aspect has been ceded to the knives who carry out the training by the approval of the board. And uh, a real estate surveyor or a real estate educator who wants to be, who is not qualified member and wants to qualify can follow the process starting, it may start from either the, the cadre of being probationer or, or graduate level, if he has a BSc or HND in estate management. Um, by that, he will take uh, professional exams of professional qualifying, professional practice exams only, while those who have HND will take professional qualifying exam three in addition to PPE. Then I'm aware there are some people in the departments who lecture in estate management departments who are not estate surveyors, but they have degrees. Those ones we have to start from a student level and go through the run of a foundation level, uh, PQE1, PQE2, PQE3, and PPE. Depending on the content of the knowledge, their knowledge content, which is found from the, the, the transcript, the education committee goes through the transcript to be able to know where to recommend for such a person to start. And um, can you move forward, please? We just have um, five more minutes, Ma, to yes, round we up. Rounding, we're rounding up. We'll get Thank here. you. Okay. Thank you. So by getting, uh, after passing the exam, the person goes to a uh, membership committee of knives and is elected. And by being elected, he can now apply to the uh, board for registration to practice. And uh, we are now concluding, and I want to note that the need for professionalism among real estate educators cannot be overemphasized. I'm aware that real estate educators in academic institutions need professional qualifications for promotion purposes. What this means is that lecturers in estate management without professional qualification as registered estate surveyors and valuers may suffer stagnation at particular grades in their educational qualification. And those who not, sorry, in effect, professionalism comes with personal uh, gain to the real estate educator as well as uh, benefits the system. And because the real estate educator by promotion, he earns more income by being qualified, he can also earn income from professional uh, practice. And uh, this goes to say that it pays to be a professional because professionalism pays. And uh, as real estate educators, let us become professional. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, wow. and that's the end. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Uche Eguatu, for an expository um, lecture. Thank you so much. And um, I know that we have learned a lot if we have not even started. I know that it's going to be a very interesting lecture series because this one already is just the tip of the iceberg. So thank you so much, colleagues. Let's just give her a round of applause. Okay, as we now hold on for your questions, we are going to entertain questions after the lectures. So if you have any question for Dr. Mrs. Eguatu, please hold it to finish all other lectures. Thank you so much. It was a, a, a very, if I have other questions, thank God um, our able president is here. 
And I know that um, the Esbabon chairman also is here because we oh, all need your attention. I think so. I don't know if he's here, but I hope he's here. If he's not here, thank God, Echuchegwato is also the chairman of education committee in the Esbabon because there are some issues that some schools are having regarding to professionalism or professional estate surveyors in their school. Thank you so much once again. So we are set for another lecture. And um, this lecture is going to be taken by one of our own, our also seasoned uh, professor in real estate. Well, I don't have to say about her until somebody will come and tell us about her. But I just know that her name is Professor Missy, Professor Ibimina Kakulu. Please, somebody will read the citation. The person that will read the citation is, I hope I, the, I, hope I pronounce the name very well, is um, ESV Ogechi Wichi. Please, could you step up and um, say, give us a citation of our eminent Professor, thank you so much. I hope Ogech is here. Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you so much, please. Good morning, all. Standing on the already established um, protocol, um, my name is ESV Ogechi Adline Wechi. I'm here to give the citation of Professor Yenemi Ibimina Kakulu. Professor Yenemi Ibimina Kakulu has over 3.5 decades of teaching and research experience in real estate, land use management and valuation, and is currently a professor of land management and valuation at the River State University, Nigeria. She is a fellow of the Nigerian Institution of Estate of Years and Values. Professor Kakulu currently lectures in the Department of Estate Management at the River State University, Port Harcourt. Can we welcome Professor Kakulu, a mentor to many, a lecturer by excellence, the first professor of land management and valuation in Nigeria, a human capacity developer, an astute and diligent professional to this great podium. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my dear. My dear. Um, we welcome her to the podium. Professor, can we have your audience? We yeah, have... Good morning. I'm here. Um, right, ma. Good morning, um, noble colleagues. And um, resting on all protocols, may I just recognize the presence of the president and chairman of council of the Nigerian oh, Institution of Estate Surveyors and, 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 and Valuers, Chief Ima Wike, and the first and second vice, if they are on the platform. May I also recognize the chairman of Esvabon and the registrar. Good morning and you're welcome. Um, it gives me pleasure to be here to share this Saturday morning with you all. And I do hope that the next 10, 15 minutes would be worthwhile. Um, may I kindly request to be allowed to share my screen or is that my screen going to be shared by Naive? I, can I share my screen? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. No, can I have the PowerPoint on, not the um, PDF, please? Can I share it? I think I send both of them to her, to him. You can go ahead, ma'am. Okay, have you, you allowed me to share? share. Yes, you okay. can. All right, yeah, thank okay. you.
Okay, good morning once again. And I have um, a rather short presentation, but um, I'm going to make it a little bit different. You know, academics, one thing about us is that um, we approach things from different um, perspectives at all times. But at the end of the day, we're all trying to say the same thing. Um, so, sorry, I'm just trying to switch my phone off. Yeah. Okay. So the main content of what I'm going to be looking at today, real estate educators, who are we? What sort of training should we have? What are our roles, responsibilities as real estate educators? What relationship should we maintain with professionalism? And what are the traps? What are the pitfalls that we should avoid? And First of all, we are people who are required to obtain, sorry, I think I missed one. Okay. It's an extremely broad field, it covers several tasks that are associated with property investment. What do we do? The whole real estate industry is about making your investment in land related opportunities work for you or work for your clients. That's what we are doing. That's the whole idea of, you know, the institution, the board, academia, those in the ministry, those in authorities, those in the banking sector who are responsible for real estate. It's all about moving land from bare land to something tangible that gives a worthwhile return to an investor. And so real estate educators are specialists. That's who they are, that's who we are. We're specialists in education. But we're specialists in education for a particular industry. Just the same way teachers are specialists in education, maybe in primary education or secondary education, we are specialists in education. That's our primary specialization. And what we do is to make sure that we are able to promote basic sound theoretical foundations on which people can build as they go into becoming practitioners. So again, looking at land, most of what we look at is the economics of land, the economics of land use, investment opportunities, potential returns. And without such basic foundational knowledge and thinking, when people go out to become practitioners, the chances are that they might not really understand the fundamentals of what they are doing in the field. You can be a mechanic. You can learn how to be a mechanic by working in a garage all your life. You can also study mechanical engineering and become a mechanic. They are slightly different. One person has the foundational knowledge, the academic yeah. knowledge, the theoretical foundations yeah. of what he's doing and understands why it should be done in a particular way, while the other person understands how to do it and how to do it and get it right. Both of them are required. Now, educators would regularly be employed in colleges, mm. polytechnics, universities, or other institutions where real estate practitioners obtain academic education. I'm trying to separate professional education from academic, intellectual, theoretical, foundational knowledge, which is a requirement in every discipline, particularly in medicine and similar disciplines. So what training should the real estate educator have? To begin with, there are people who are required to obtain postgraduate academic degrees. It is really important, it is, it is crucial. And why you should obtain those degrees is to enable you specialize so that you can provide leadership in at least one or more aspects of the 
profession. This profession is a very wide profession. And any profession without the think tanks busy doing their work will always lag behind while others go ahead. So the job of the real estate educator, first of all, is to make sure that he or she is properly educated, has the sound education. In fact, the Nigerian Universities Commission or National or NUC National is coming up with, you know, has even come up with, you know, um, policies where going forward to come into academia, you must start with a PhD. They are gradually beginning to remove all other levels of qualification as the basic requirement. The reason simply is you cannot give leadership that you do not have, particularly in terms of foundational teaching. And so there are people who are required by employment, by training, by the nature of what they have chosen to specialize in, which is education, to show mastery of education, to understand education, and then more specifically, since they are targeting a particular industry, to understand education for the real estate industry. Now, the higher qualifications are crucial you are not going to be able to understand how to provide credible research and make lasting solutions to professional practice challenges without being versed, widely read, widely, you know, you know, you have a lot on your plate that you understand. So that at any point in time when you are picked up to make a comment on something, you are able to provide some level of leadership in terms of that. Now, what is the role of this educator? Now, first of all, we have one very fundamental role, which is to provide the foundation. For people who study medicine, usually in the first two to three years, they are classroom based. They study the fundamentals. They study every single aspect of medicine from surgery to gynae to, you know, everything. They study about the human being. They understand the basic foundations. And as they begin to progress in career, they begin to go for clinicals. That's professional, you know, um, um, experience. They build on a foundation. Without a foundation, it's very different to build. You know, those of us who have tried our hands in so many places, catering, we've done so many different things. Good and nice. We can all fit in. But there's a place for those who have studied nutrition. There's a place for those who have studied catering. There's a place for those who understand the fundamentals, the basics of what it is they're doing and why it should be done that way. We all don't have to be there, but we all need to have some information we can pass across. So the foundational theories that shaped the real estate industry that continue to be in front end research, you know, breaking new grounds and foundations, this is one of the things that real estate educators do, help to keep the profession ahead and help to keep the profession, you know, current. So the second thing we do is to research into industry related challenges and proffer solutions to them. Now here we are, we're in a pandemic. And during the pandemic, doctors are in the hospital, overwhelmed by what has happened, but for the researchers, but for the scientists, but for those who had dedicated the last 30, 40, 50 years of their life into research, we will still be looking for a vaccine for COVID-19 today. Now, the relationship was such that the doctors are in the hospital, the professionals, the practitioners, they are sending feedback to those in the laboratories and saying, this is what we are seeing. These are the symptoms they are presenting. This is what is going wrong with our patients. Please help us do something about it. 
Let's know what medication we need to give them. Now imagine that in pharmacy or in medicine, there were no researchers. Everybody was out in the field practicing. Who would have gone back to get us a vaccine? Who would have gone back to look into the symptoms that are being presented by the patients and the pharmaceutical industry swung into action to say, well, there are some existing drugs that can be used as prophylactics, you know, and all of that. People were thinking. The think tanks, who are specialists, who are educators, whose job and career is to do research were at their duty post. And any profession that understands this responsibility knows how to relate. So the job of the real estate educator related to practice is to find solutions to the problems in practice. And if the problems in practice don't filter back into research, research has no way of doing anything about it. So solutions, you know, issues come up and there's nobody to solve them. And the third and the most important part of the real estate educator is mentoring, character development. Most of the young people who come into academia come in at age 16, 17, 18, 19. These are children and they are with you for four years or four or five years or four and a half years because six months they're out on IT. And the character development of that child, the sort of person that will go into the field tomorrow and will not steal clients' money, the sort of character that will go into the field and will not shortchange the principal consultant, the kind of character that will go into the field and will be able to work in an office environment and will not drive away all your clients by rude behavior, all of that is molded by the educators. And this for me, in the last 36 years in which I have lectured, is the most important and the most demanding responsibility of the educator. And that is why in a forum where we are women, for us, it comes naturally to us not to mind our business. You see a child not well-dressed, you will not mind your business. You want to tell that child to dress properly because that child needs to dress properly in the field tomorrow. You see a boy who is moving around with gangs, playing and never serious. You corner him and he comes and sits down at your desk. And I will share a testimony or an experience with one of our colleagues, which you all or many of you might know very well, you know, Okoji, Uche Okoji of Uche Okoji and Associates. Um, this was one of the most restless students I have ever taught in my life. Okoji was into everything. Business, um, producing aquariums. He was such a gifted student. But I found out that this student was also very intelligent, but just could not sit still. And I took an interest. And I said to him one day, I said, if you put all this energy, all this creativity, all this acumen that you have into this career, the sky is your limit. And to the glory of God, not only did he take that advice, immediately after NYC, proceeded to commence the master's, proceeded to take the naive exams, did best in the naive exams for that particular year and got the award. And within the minimum duration that anyone could be elected, Okoji got elected and became a practitioner by 2006, within three and a half years of graduating to four maximum. It wasn't even up to four. Now, why do I mention that? Mentoring helps us identify where we think many of our students will go when they graduate. Some will go into the ministry because you can find the character of detail. There are people who like to pay attention to detail, who are meticulous about records. Each aspect of this profession requires 
different mindsets and different capabilities and different personalities. There are those who are marketers. They can market anything. And you start training such people for a career in agency, property management. So first of all, as you know your students, you are in a position to mold them and spare their interests in a particular area. I didn't think I was ever going to be in academia. I didn't think about it. But Professor Ume, who was my external examiner in 1985, simply said to my university in his report as the external examiner, this lady should be encouraged to remain in academia and ask the university to engage me as a graduate assistant. And here I am 36 years later, I haven't gone anywhere else. So it takes a bit more to identify as your mentor. Now, there's a symbiotic relationship between the profession and academia. Our roles are distinct, our roles are different, but our roles are complementary. And that is the point I would like to drive home if that's all I mentioned today. Like I had mentioned from the COVID situation, the doctors and the hospital could not have been in the laboratory at the same time, preferring solutions. Five minutes. Round up, ma. Yeah, I am. I'm just one more slide to the COVID okay, um, situation. And so we must remember that all graduates of estate management have the potential to become our colleagues. And from when they come into school, day one, unless you're hoping they're not going to pass the exams, they're your colleagues. So how you guide them, how you treat them until they graduate is so important. And that is where we can make contributions. Again, our job is to ensure that Wherever the professionals go, we have given them foundational knowledge to be able to thrive, either in private practice, by a character of integrity, honesty, sincerity, and openness, or those who are meticulous, who end up in government keeping records and moving papers and ensuring that things are done, or those who we encourage to come back into academia and join the educators. While some choose to go into different parts, others choose to go into education. It is a choice, it's a specialist area, and what you make out of it several years down the line is what you learn. There are pitfalls to avoid, and I say this from experience. You can't eat your cake and have it. Being an educator requires passion, discipline, strong commitment, to be and to remain there. And when you realize that the job you do is a duty to society and it's a duty to the profession, because without you, neither will thrive. IT comes in, real estate is behind because all other professions that run ahead with IT, we are lagging behind. If those of us in academia or education are not akin to learning opening new, bar, new, new frontiers, doing new things, the society, the, the profession stagnates. Thirdly, the time input required to grow in real estate as, a, as an educator is enormous. You must commit time. If you don't commit time to study, to learn, to relearn, you cannot be useful to the professionals out in the field. And so, we need to understand this relationship so that we encourage one another. We send students out for IT. When they return, they do final year projects. That gives us a chance to get back from the practice what needs to be up, what needs to be improved upon. So the students who go on IT for six months are our world, our door to the profession. When they come back, we debrief them. We look at their IT reports. They do final year projects as soon as they return from IT. We see what they are able to do. And that relationship helps us. So we appeal that 
as much as possible. Don't make them the tea girls and the coffee boys. Ensure that they are able to get the experience that they need. So when we send them out to you beyond NYSE, you take over in practice and begin to train them to become hands-on in the field professionals, having come out with a basic foundational knowledge on the theories and the fundamentals of the field into which they are going to practice. So I would like to thank you all. Yeah, my concluding point is we're specialists. We keep the profession abreast with technology. We research to solve professional problems. We produce manpower for the profession. We need to interact regularly with the profession to understand where the challenges are so we can go back into our think tank and our laboratories and come up with the solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, our eminent professor. That was an in-depth, an insight into what we are supposed to know about our profession, about the educators, about our roles towards bringing up this profession to a higher level. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you very, very much. And I know that we all learned a lot of things, especially those in the, in the, in the institution, those in the higher institution that are training these professionals, and also those in the firms, the principal partners, that is not only those in the, in the education system that are responsible for bringing up this professional that you have a lot to do. Thank you so much. Well, we'll sit back and um, you know, listen to the last lecture before we come back to our questions. Um, the person to take the last lecture, um, the last lecture is um, a lecture from Dr. Titilayo Okabam, and um, we have another surveyor, noble colleague, to read out her citation in the person of ESV, Olufowobi Olawumi. I, I, I hope she's here. Let's just take the last lecture before we start asking our questions or reacting to whatever we have learned this evening, this morning. Thank you for Please, ESV Olu for Wobi, please. Is she here? I hope she's here. Please unmute. Wow. We don't have time again. I thought she's here. Okay, if she's not here, let me see. I think I have her profile. She's she's around. Yeah, she's, she's around. She needs to unmute. Please she's unmute. There. Unmute. Is her audio not um okay? She did not, she did not unmute. She needs to unmute herself. That's why. Good afternoon, noble colleagues. Good afternoon, noble colleagues. My okay, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Good afternoon, noble colleagues. Yes, standing on the system protocol. My name is ESP Olufobiola Umirecha from Lagos State. I'm here to do citation for Dr. Titilayo Ukabam. Dr. Titilayo Ukabam, we have a BSc in estate management from University of Ife. Now, Obafe Nawolo University, Ile Ife. She has a PhD in estate management from University of Lagos. She also has a master in uh, construction management from the University of Lagos. She's a fellow of Nigerian Institution of Estates of Yours and Palua. She's a registered of yours, and she has 36 years teaching experience. She's a chief lecturer from the Department of Estates Management and Valuation, Yaba College of Technology. Join me at a also, she's also Presently, the Deputy Rector Academics from Yava College of Technology, Lake State. So join me as I present to you, Dr. Titilayo Bukabam. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much as we welcome Dr. Titilaya Okabam to the podium. Welcome, Ma. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Ma. Good morning, Ma. You're welcome. You're welcome. You very much. Uh, I, want to, I want to stand on the established protocol. Uh, dynamic presidents of NICE and other council members present, the chairman of Ezra Bond and other members present. Uh, I want to appreciate the organizers, the potent chairman of Women's Wing of Knives. And um, I want to also appreciate every noble distinguished colleagues you know, here on this platform. Thank you very much for inviting me for this presentation. The topic before me this morning is impacting professionalism on real estate educator. My other earlier presenters, they have focused on some, some germane aspects of the topic and um, they have discussed about how you can become a professional estate surveyor. In, uh, and they have also discussed about mentoring and uh, research so I want to address this, this topic, looking at four aspects that is self-development and available sponsorship, teaching skills, administrative skills, research, publication, and available, available grants. That is, I'll also, I'll just focus because they have discussed extensively on some aspects that my paper covered. I will focus majorly on competency in skills expected of a professional real estate educator. The competency in skill expected of a professional real estate educator. Like I said, self-development, they have mentioned it, but let me just emphasize, the real estate educator should have a good understanding of the course she is lecturing because you cannot give what you don't have. And the world is always changing. We have new development, new policy, new regulations, new decrees and acts that affect land. So the real estate educator must be up to date, or be up to date uh, in uh, understanding of the course lecture that she is taking. So it's very vital that the real estate educator should continue to learn you must continue to learn for you to be able to impact knowledge on your students. You know, like you have to, you might need to get a higher degree. You might need to attend conferences and workshops and learn new things in order to improve yourself so that it can impact positively, positively on your students and give them necessary tools with which they will be useful when they practice after graduation. So also the real estate educators, because you know all this higher degree sponsorship uh, is important. You know, for you to get higher degree, at times you might need sponsorship. So you must be abreast with the available sponsorship in your institution, your states, or the federal government. Also, when you look at the continuum continue of service the condition of service or the scheme of service of your uh, organization, it will guide you. you know, it will tell you when you can go on study leave and the condition attached to it. So self-development is key. My other presenters, has, uh, they have mentioned the importance of research, even in the, during this uh, COVID pandemic era, how we can complement those in the industry, but without necessary uh, you know, improvement, we will not be able to do that. The new skills of, you know, you know, sending out questionnaire to people and getting feedback. So if you don't get to know those new skills, you might not be relevant and you might not be able to, you know, teach your students appropriately. Like, you know, all the presenters we have graduated a long time ago. And there are a lot of things that have changed over the period. So, so to also be relevant, we need to keep, we need to keep to, to update ourselves. 
reading, you know, thank God for the internet. You can search for any topic and you get information. You can check for journals published on different topics and get information. So we need to be abreast with what is going on in our field uh, through searching for information so as to get abreast with what is going on so that we can develop ourselves and so as to impact appropriate knowledge to our students is very, very key because we have a role to play in the institution of SA Surveyors and Valua. We are the molders. So for us to mold you know, appropriately, we need to keep on learning. So it's very, very key. I also want to talk about the teaching skills. Teaching skills is very, very important. You may have a knowledge of a particular subject, but how do you pass it across? effectively to your students. How do you make them to attend with interest is important. They must be able to attend with interest and learn. You must be able to transfer the acquired knowledge, both academically and professionally, to your students in a meaningful way. So we need to relate this knowledge that we have acquired to real estate practice is very, very important that we must relate it. It's not just giving them theory. They must know how it is related to real estate practice. Also, as educators, we need to modify the instruction as needed to help the students attend with interest. There is what we call class management. You must be able to manage your class. You must set ground rules. Like, you know, state of nowadays, they come to the class, block their ears, listening to one thing or the other. So first of all, what, you, what I do is that I look at them. I said, in my class, I don't want any disturbance of phone. You put your soul, switch off your phone or you put it on silence. And I don't you remove everything that you have used to block your ear because you will, not, you will not hear me when you have blocked your ear. So it's important for us to know the student we are working with because students of nowadays are not like, 30, 20 years ago, or even 10 years ago. So we need to understand the, 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 that the times are changing. And for us to impact knowledge effectively, we need to ad adjust and ensure that we are able to manage them appropriately. You know, like one of the presenter talks about this, you know, you have to relate with them, understand them, try to help them to achieve their purpose in life. So it's, it's also important for us to plan. You must plan your teaching as an educator. You must plan your teaching in order to achieve the goals of the curriculum and ensure that the required resources are available. You must develop strong communication skill. And it's also important that you must be able to listen very, very well to your students so as to ensure that you encourage interaction as a, as a supportive to your teaching uh, and passing on knowledge. You know, students at times will be there, you know, their background differs. Some of them can be very annoying, but you must be committed to the job and avoid bullying or offensive conduct. We must find a way of relating with them. Time we call them and correct them. So the basic knowledge of different teaching methods are very, very important. You know, how do you ensure that you have a continuous assessment that carries them along and to ensure effective learning? For example, you can give them the read up assignments, group work, class presentation, solving past questions. Because if you are taking valuation, you must thank God we have some books now on 1,000 questions of valuation that you can say, okay, let's be solving it. Because if you don't do that, you, they will not develop interest in valuation, and valuation is key to our profession, because uh, we need to find a way by which they will flow. We need to find a way by which we can carry them along and ensure that they get to know the basis of the profession. So teaching skill is very, very crucial because you may know what you, the subject very well, but if you are not able to pass it across, if you are not able to effectively pass it across and ensure that they attend with interest, so you must have different skills 
you know, by which you pass the you know, knowledge across, you can use lecture method, you can do participation, interaction, assignment, and so many other methods by which you make them to know that subject and also to know that it's relevant. Well, by the time you give them assignment that relating to that topic, then they carry out that assignment. At times, okay, go and do valuation of this building, assuming that the, the, that block of flats is uh, on about Macaulay, and uh, you know, is uh, you give them some parameters, or you ask them, just go and do a survey, market analysis, so that they know what and what they should do when it comes to actual valuation uh, exercise, so that when they go out in the field, they will not disgrace us. They will know what and what. They will not be checking textbook for, uh, for you know, IRM. <laughs> So it's important for us to you know, use practical examples in order to carry them along. And you know, I want to appreciate the Professor Kakulu. There was one time I came to Potakot because I want to learn more. You know, the Knives Learning Center was organizing the, uh, a, a training. So I was at Potakot to learn something. So how I can use GPS. And since that time when I'm teaching my students you know, land economics, I make them to know that you can search for this, you know, let us try to locate this building on, uh, on, uh, on, you know, on, on excuse me, like marketing or agency, you know, you don't need to be in that place before you can market the, you know, the person may be far away in another country, then you can market the property. So it's important for us to develop teaching skills and train ourselves to in order to be able to pass this knowledge effectively to our students. So I also want to talk about administrative skills. Administrative skills is very, very important. As soon as you, you know, join the, 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 the academic environment, you become a lecturer, you must have interest in administrative uh, issues because some people are asked to manage, you know, the, the situation, the administrative sector, of that of the institution. So when you are given a work of class advisor, exam officer, and so on, embrace it with uh, you know with with all joy, knowing that definitely you affect your time for research and everything. But notwithstanding, you need it in order to progress effectively in that in the profession as real estate educators. So you need to develop good working relationship with the administrators and other lecturer. They will assist you to know the necessary administrative procedures that will meet the, your needs, your goals and objectives. And you must avail yourself administrative training when available because they are very, very important. You must avail yourself of administrative training when available because those managerial skills at times they organize training for class advisors, exam officers, you, know, you must be there to learn you know, the basic things that you need to know about the profession. So that is very, very important. My colleagues, uh, other presenters have talked about research and available grants, and it's very, very important. The, um, the relationship between the town and the gown for us to be able to improve upon our profession. And you must also be able to know the available grants, you know, Ability to solve problems through research is important. Then the solution also should be published. There are grants available, and you must uh, know how to write a grant. Uh, you know, write a, a grant uh, proposal for a grant so that you can receive grants to forge ahead in your research is very very important. So it's important for us as real estate educators to ensure that we develop ourselves continuously to be able to impact knowledge and to be able to contribute to our profession and the society that has you know, given us a mandate to the, to, by registering us as essence of and values and also making sure that we must impact our society positively. We had the molders, so we need to mold our, our students to make them profitable to make them you know, fulfill the role expected of estate surveyors and valuers in the society. The real estate educator must know the acceptable procedure for research and publication. 
is expected to know how to write award-winning grants for your research. So the, we have emphasized on the importance of self-development, teaching skills, administrative skills, research, and available grants. So in conclusion, thank you. We must keep on learning, keep researching, keep publishing. We must be committed, hardworking, and diligence pay. So the pay may not be as where well if you are in practice, but notwithstanding, where you are committed, the law will open ways for you. As you build others, others, and as you mold people, then the Lord will also bless you in that field. So by the grace of God, at least the, uh, the first vice president of a noble profession, uh, and also the present vice, first vice president, and also the past uh, Lagos State branch were my students. So we could see the impact we could make in molding our, our society, our profession to an enviable so height. So don't give up. Yeah. Eventually, you will achieve your goal. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for this thank opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please. And, thank um, you, Ma. Well done. All them, all the people that have presented their lectures today, we are so happy that we have seasoned educators, professionals in the field. So we don't have any fear. You see, well, how many years back, they are still very, very apt. Thank you so much. We, we, we love you all. We are so grateful that um, I know that you have a lot of your lecturer, your students that are here and you know the, the, uh, the products that you produce. And we believe that the younger educators also will learn from you. Thank you so much. And this is time for um, questions now. I know we have a lot of reactions um, from the lectures from the town, from the gown. So can we hear, I don't know if anybody is, um, oh, okay, yes. Before I proceed, I have to recognize the presence of our second vice. Second vice, um, we, we called you before to address us. And I think, um, I don't know if you still want to address us. Yeah, we, we, we want you to address us today. Now, please. Our second vice uh, president in the name of um, ESB, Victor Alonge, please. The noble women, nice noble women welcome you. Thank you very much. Good morning, um, Mr. President, the uh, first vice president, all council members, the uh, interim coordinator, as they call it, of the uh, women's wing, all the um, ESCO members, and very noble and beautiful, naive women. Um, good morning. Uh, let me apologize for joining late. I was not too late. I think I joined shortly after you asked me to come because um, uh, when the citation of uh, the first speaker was about to be read, that was when I joined. Um, but I'm sorry uh, that I joined late, um, but I've enjoyed you know, everything that I've had. And I want to personally uh, congratulate the interim um, uh, coordinator for, first of all, the choice of this topic, and then the resource persons that you have brought out. Um, I'm not sure you could have actually done better, but you have done very well. The three speakers are distinguished professionals, apart from being educators, they are also professionals in, in, their, in their various capacity and they have made impact in this profession. So I congratulate you. And I also congratulate the women 
win. Now, um, I have actually, I've actually listened, and I think um, the all the speakers, uh, from what I have listened, all the speakers practically addressed, you know, the, the, there is a central theme in all the presentation, which means there is a meeting of minds. And then when we have such, then it makes our job easier because everybody is thinking alike and they have done great justice to this presentation. I just want to, on behalf of uh, um, I think my president will have addressed us. I missed the president's address. The president will have made out the vision of the of the institution. Uh, I just want to uh, encourage the educators more uh, in terms of research, uh, because um, I I was very happy when I listened to all of them speak about research because that is the life blood of any profession. Um, if you take research out, then you have a dead body. Research is like blood, you know, in human being. Um, if you don't have the blood circulate, then the, 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 the person is dead. So I just want us to look into that more and also understand with due respect that there is a difference between research for professional practice and research for academic purpose. Um, the institution should be interested in both, but we also, we, also, we also like the the, uh, the academia to look at the problems in the practice and then help us work with practitioners uh, to, um, to actually address it. Um, in terms of research for academic advancement, you know, I think the role of the institution there will be to support you with the, the, the finance, the enablement, the, um, uh, uh, you know, whatever. It. Yes. You so, have nailed it, sir. So, 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 so my, my noble women and colleagues, I think research is, um, is something that we need to take seriously. And I want to say that I'm happy with this first outing. This outing is fantastic. And I congratulate you. And I, you don't know how much happy I am that you achieved this level of success. And I want to wish you all the best and also promise that the institution will stand behind you, will support you, and we will do whatever it takes to make sure that this women wing is actually fully established and is also uh, prosperous. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend. And I'm still here to enjoy the question and answer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, our second vice. You really nailed it. And we are happy that um, the institution is also thinking that way in terms of research. Thank you so much. Now, um, without taking much time, we want to entertain some few questions based on the lectures that we just had. Please. I don't know if. Anybody has any question or you want to throw light to, to what has been taught us today? Please. Yes. It's really running. Hello. Yeah. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Go ahead. Your name? My name is Ofyong Samuel Lupong. Okay. Good morning, noble colleagues. Good morning. I want to. I want to recognize the president and the hierarchy of the institution. I want also to recognize the, the members of the organizing committee. I want to appreciate you all. Uh, having listened to those lectures by the three presenters, I have in mind that there is a future, a bright future for our profession. And I want to thank them very much uh, with the examples. But my question is, especially to Professor Kakulu, I have noticed within the years that there seems to be a segregation 
that does not want to admit people into the doctorate degree. Because I learned from uh, one of my sisters that the academia makes it a PhD is patience, then H is hard work, and D is dobale. So the oh. nouns tend to segregate the number of persons that are coming into the academia. I don't know whether the same thing is happening in the Northern Nigeria, but mostly in the Southern Nigeria. Sometimes you go in, you want to pursue your master's, you can pass the qualifying exams, but one way or the other, they put an order that you cannot do. Is it because you want to uh, um, uh, monitor, or is it that you want to limit the number of persons you are admitting in a year? or because there is a, a deliberate attempt to segregate or keep some people away so that the academia will just have a few persons that will be, um, uh, that will be there and then it's not open to the other persons. Is that a deliberate thing or is it by design? I, I want uh, some lights on, on this aspect, please. But all in all, I think it has been, I've, I've been educated and it is akin to what uh, was done sometimes in Niger State where the educators meet in a conference. I, I want to thank you all. Yeah, thank you so much. I think we have to take um, some of these questions and then, um, or do we take it um, one after the other? Let's see if yeah, we have another question. Great, Conte yeah. is here. Yeah. Sorry, another question, please. Another question. Oh. Uh, sorry, may I come in? May I please suggest that we encourage women to ask questions first? Everybody okay. should ask so questions, but my hands please, are up. yes, please, women, please, this is your forum. This is yours. And um, please encourage yourself and ask questions. No matter what the questions are, please ask and let's, yes. let's have women participation. Thank you. Observation. Go ahead. Who's somebody's hand is up, please. Who is that? That's me, Esther. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, please. Good afternoon, all. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Uh, Go ahead. Vice President. Uh, I still stand on yeah. the exam protocol. Yeah. Yeah. I want to appreciate our three resource persons. But I just want them to address these issues. Having given us very serious, impactful lecture this morning. This, the first one goes to ESV Dr. Uche Eguatu. Please, how do we address this challenge of a situation where in some institutions, the lecturers that are lecturing our estate management um, uh, students are not trained in the field of estate management. Uh -huh. Then secondly, we have discovered that many a time, some of our lecturers, they are much more interested in getting their, um, the, being, uh, getting the doctorate degree, being a professor, they pay little or no attention to our profession. How do we strike a balance? Because we have seen a situation where somebody can be um, a head of department, yet he's still a, a, a probationer. I don't think um, it's right. How do we address that, that matter? Then also to our, our mommy, ESV uh, professor, Mrs. Iyenemi Kakulu. Yes. I also want them. Um, I also want Tim her to address this issue, the mentoring challenge we're observing. When we go to some of our institutions, we discover that the lecturers, the department are the staffed. They don't have enough um, staff to match up with the number of students in the, in, in the department. So um, many a time, paying keen attention to each of them becomes a, a very serious challenge for, 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 the, for the lecturers. So how do we do that? Because more staff are needed so that 
more attention can be paid to, to our students. You also mentioned them, um, also looking at their dressing code. I'm aware that when we, when we are in school those days, there are, there's a way you can, you can dress. You are walked out of the class, but I don't think that such things are, are still invoked now. I, I think it's, it should be sustained. Then thirdly, again to our, our ESV, ESV doctor, Titi Lyle, he mentioned about, he mentioned um, about our students knowing how to carry them along because the way they are behaving now is not the way we behaved. It's like they are now in the 21st century. And we see that they manifest a lot of non-commitment and unseriousness. How do we, how do we help these ones so that they can come up and be useful to the profession? Thank you. One more because we don't, the time is fast, man. Yes, I'm already. Moderator, moderator, my hands have been up. Who is, who is that, please? Dante. Dante, please give your is a question, please, so that um, they can start answering their questions, please. All right, thank you, moderator. All protocols daily and well observed. I want to thank all the presenters. They have done justice to the topic at hand. I want to talk about, I want to make a brief comment on the issue of research, especially the third speaker when she spoke about research and application for research grants. And I also want to speak to what the second um, vice president said about research, that there's academic research and research for practice. Academic research is to solve problems experienced in practice. They are not two parallel lines at all. Rather, they go hand in hand. Right now, there are a lot of research grants that are won in the university. Re research has gone beyond sending out questionnaires. To practitioners to feel. Now we want prize when you they're always evasive. Please join this team. Let's carry out this research to be able to solve the problems experienced in practice. Two things we'll be solving. We'll be solving practitioners' problem as well. Your network cognition as well as solving your local problems. So what I just want to say here is when we put a call through to you to join our oh. research team is to solve a problem. You give them time. I just want to use to say that from time to time, we would be calling you to join our research team so that we can jointly solve the problems we are experiencing in practice. Please don't leave the research to the people in the academia. We need your input. We need everything you can give to make Thank research so a good one. Thank you. That's a, that's a very valid one. Thank you. Thank you, Tante. Um, yeah. I think um, we'll now call on, um, I think, Prof, to answer the question, to attempt, um, you know. Please, there is another question. I've been raising up my hands. Please, unless you just one minute, one minute, because we don't have uh, much time. We just have very limited time to come. Who is there? Go ahead, go ahead, so that we'll take everything at the same time, please. Thank you very much. I am ESB. Uh, please go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead. Just, just ask your question. <laughs> Your audio Please, is not. Your audio is not. Hello. Go ahead. Hello. Okay. Hello. For those Hello. Of... Can you type it? Can you type it so that we see if can you can see? Okay. Hello. I'm on. I said for those of us that we're in the ministry. We can you type that? Just type it, please. Eh? Um, so we'll the other questions, please. Okay. 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 Please, Prof. I think um, let's um, let's go ahead and then tackle the questions that are already being asked. 
Hello. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, ma. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I guess I'll the first one for ESP Ukbong. Um, yeah. there are a number of reasons why the PhD um admissions are a bit difficult. First of all, universities have regulations, so the maximum a senior lecture number of people a senior lecturer can supervise for the masters at any point in time is five and the maximum you can supervise for phd at any point in time is two now most of the challenges we face are that some of our colleagues who enroll on phd programs go anything from three to seven years or ten and don't finish now while you are assigned to those people, you cannot be assigned to any other person to supervise. I remember when I did my PhD at the University of Reading, you know, Peter Ban was told it had to be me. And that's why you finish when you go there three years, four years, you're on your own. Because if you don't finish within the time allotted, your supervisor would have to be moved to someone else. You know, but here that doesn't yet happen. But maybe when that starts happening, it's one area and rightly like the next you know, uh, person mentioned, we're understaffed. Academia remains understaffed, and that is why it's important that those who are there do the best they can. A lot of us do the jobs of three or four people in the course of teaching, because actually most of the time in academia is to be spent in research and preparation for lectures, but that rarely happens, because you're just teaching and teaching and teaching with very little time for research. And just a comment by way of comment on what was said by ESV Tonte. Research is research. There's no difference between academic research and the whole idea in research is problem solving. That's what it is. Now, there are different types of research where you want to focus on short and quick opinion polls. I mean, two weeks ago, we launched an opinion poll on rentals in response to the minister's, you know, um, insinuation about uh, monthly rentals or quarterly rentals or periodic rentals that are less than one year. That was a short and quick opinion poll, 150 or so respondents in a period of 48 hours, and were able to come up with something for practice and say, look, this is the way people are thinking. And this is the way different categories or different groups are thinking. We can then share the details of those comments to academia and say, academia, here you are, a whole long list of issues that can be addressed. Go and do academic research on this. Tell us how other countries have followed, you know, solved issues like this in the past. That may take two years or more. That may need MSCs or PhDs to be done. So they are quick thoughts. Thank turn you around so you know, studies yeah. and they are longer studies. So we just need to realize that all of them are geared towards solutions to practice uh, practical problems. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much, Ma. Um, Dr. Uche, I think uh, there's a question that was posed to you. I don't know if you can just throw a little light on it because we are our, our time is really fast spent. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, moderator. Uh, the questions um, that relate to me, I think it's from Esther Etchen. I hope I'm right. And yeah. uh, I was talking about how to address the challenge. We are some lecturers in estate management are not, uh, are not trained in estate management. Uh, it's possible to have uh, such particularly for those who service the program. There are some other, you have law, you have, um, you, you, you have law, lawyers who teach in the program and other service courses, even building construction and all those. And um, what happens is that there's also a route for such people in the professional training. I know a number of them who by virtue of training in uh, training estate management students ended up being interested in becoming estate surveyors and valuers. And uh, how to go through the process 
from I think from foundation and they do they did all the the professional qualifying stages and today they are registered estate surveyors and valuers. But those people who want to remain in their own profession, there is nothing you can do about it to force them because they are well knowledgeable in the area they service uh, the estate management students. It is not only estate surveyors and valuers that are real estate educationers that can teach estate management students. So I hope that uh, that is clear. And the other one is talking about a situation uh, where you have some lecturers who do not pay attention to actually teaching students because they want their own personal development progress. That's also, that is also real. But okay. how do you handle that? If the system, and, 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 and it's very common, you have a situation where a lecturer may not have, may not spend time to teach students, which is the primary aspect of what services the lecturer in the academy that provides academic knowledge has to do, yeah. learning, teaching, and assessment practices. But we have some lecturers who are more interested in research because of the policy of publish or perish in academic institutions. So you find such people getting promoted while some people who do the real teaching rarely get promoted because they have not been publishing. So I okay, think it depends on the institution to find a way of managing both aspects because both are necessary. Mm -hmm. If students are not taught and um, they, they end up not getting what they're supposed to do because sometimes such lecturers come and co use a weekend to cover the whole curriculum, effective teaching will not take place. So it depends on the managers of the program to find a way of making sure that there is accountability of what a lecturer does in terms of teaching learning and assessment practices in addition to researching and publishing because all those are necessary to grow the profession. Thank okay, you. Ma. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you so much, eh, Prof. And I know that um, the question that is posed for Dr. Uh, Dr. Carbon has already been answered. Because of time, I think we are going to stop right now. There are some questions that we are Post, and even my own question too. Some people had to raise their hand, but because of time, we cannot take them. One issue there is, um, I think this one should go to the institution. There was a time that there was a, a education summit. People are going for that part of that type of summit again, so that there will be a synergy between the town and gown. And we have to raise up a lot of things in that summit. That summit that happened, that uh, was, um, I think it was in Mina years back. It was a really, a really resourceful uh, summit, and people are really looking out for that type of summit. I hope my 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 um, president is here. Real estate educators and researchers are really going for that summit. Let us come and um, brainstorm on certain things to improve the improve the institution too. And another one is also asking for if there's any way the institution can influence the state government to employ more people. Well, that's one, I don't know. Then some, some also said, um, talked about um, something in the ministry. I think that one will, will really come out because we are we're going to also have a lecture relating to the ministry of people in the public, other public services. Um, at this juncture, we will soon run off we want to thank everybody, even on my own also. There is another thing, if the institution should, there is a way most, uh, our professional cadre is not really recognized in promotion. Some schools don't really recognize them. Even if EIS, ESV, they don't even recognize it. Unlike the, how they recognize the Korean, that is the engineers. If you have a Korean certificate, you are being promoted. But that of ESV, I don't think anything is done about it. Many people are just stagnated somewhere, even if you have your professional qualification. I think that one will now go later on to the maybe to X level. So on this note, I want to invite the um, the second um, pro tem vice chairman to give us a vote of thanks and um, 
somebody should um, please just give us a vote of thanks and um, or your state chair, um, Elijah. Should, I don't know, but of your state chair will also give us a closing prayer. Thank you so much. It's been a wonderful day. It's been a wonderful thing. We want to have more and more of this. Thank you very much. Please, um, the second vice chair, could you give us a closing Just one minute. Oh, sir. Hello, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm here. OK, thank you. Let me, on behalf of uh, the council and the entire membership of the institution, uh, thank you for this um, lecture that we've had this morning. Very educative and very informative. But just like the question some, some members have asked, um, one thing I have taken out of this lecture this morning is that we all need each other. We need the practitioners, need those in the academia, the educators, and we too, they also need us. And that is the essence of uh, having academia platform where those in academia, we meet and discuss just like we have the women's wing. And I'm happy that we have started, they have their own officers that will run the, uh, that platform for some time before they will do the election. The other issue that I want to also say is that we have a lot of uh, challenges in the institution. And I think that this is the essence of having that uh, research fund for our members. So it's open for our members to look at the challenges we, have, we, we in the practitioners are facing and uh, see how we can be able to get research on them and solve this problem because that, that is the only way we can also serve our uh, the members of the society better. Things are changing and we need to change with time. So as a management committee, we are trying our best to ensure that all these things are put on the front border so that we have a new system and make sure that we are not left behind in the scheme of things. And finally, on the issue of influencing employment in the state, you know, that is very critical. We might not be able to do that. The only thing we could do is to recommend. But the issue of employment lies with the, with the, with the state, with the state government and uh, maybe the civil service. Um, what we have done at the federal level is to also use Minister of Lands and um, Minister of Lands, or oh, sorry, the Minister of the Works and Housing. So we are having the same challenge of shortage of uh, our members in key position. But now that they want to employ, we have made our request to them. So for the states that are having that kind of problem, I, it's a local problem that we expect this, the branches to also act. And where they need the assistance of the national, we can we can render that on the education call on the education summit. Now that we have the, the essence of yours and values in academia, I, I think it is something that they have to discuss at their level. And if they think it is necessary for us to do that, they can escalate it to the office of the president that will take to the council. And I'm sure that the council. We definitely give approval. Okay, so, on behalf of all of us, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn this morning, and I congratulate our resource person for a job well done. Thank you very much, and I wish all of us a successful and a blissful weekend. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, my president. Thank, thank you, sir. Me. Thank you, sir. Please, with the vote of thanks by the vice, uh, by the vice interim vice president, interim vice coordinator. I think she's here. Yes, she is. Uh, okay. um, Mr. Mr. President, here's his chief, Emma Okaz Mwike, um, the second vice president, uh, here's the Victor Alonge, all our, all our, Yes, we doctor Uche Eguato. Kakulu, yes, we doctor Kakulu. And yes, we doctor uh, Titi Lyo. I want to appreciate all of you, the, the IT department. 
the, our amiable MC for today, <laughs> our M amiable coordinator, ESV, Bridget Mdali, and everyone that participated in this program today, I want to appreciate all. I want to say that um, a lot has been impacted. This lecture today has made an indelible mark and I'm, I'm quite positive that our profession will not remain the same. By, the, by what we have received today, we will go far. I want to say thank you. I also want to use this opportunity to please appeal to our resource persons, the plug that we ought to have presented is a little delayed. That will be presented much later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ESV Esther. And I call on um, Elijah Stewart to say the closing prayer, please. How do we like Thank Almighty Allah for the, another opportunity given for this maiden lecture from Women Week. But uh, to the coordinator, kindly permit me to correct the English. I'm not an Oyo State coordinator. Yes, we are your Ola Dini. Can you hear me, Ma? Sorry, I yes. made a mistake. Sorry, please. Yes, thank yes, you. Yes, we are your Ola Dini is our coordinator. So okay. I thank okay. you for the opportunity, Kevin. So I uh, will thank Almighty God once again for this noble presentation from our people, all the professors and the doctors. They really impacted knowledge in us and we really feel the sense of belongingness. We Almighty Allah continue to guide them and guide them. The wisdom will continue to rise, 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 and we continue to use the knowledge to upgrade, to upgrade themselves and the institution at large. We commit our noble president achieve Imaz of Kazuki to the glory hands of Almighty and for the landmark making all this right. May he continue to shine higher and take us to higher level. May all the templates they are setting, all the past president has said, we continue to be a sustainable development and we continue to move higher individually and as an institution. Almighty Allah, by ourselves, we can do nothing. But with you, with us, we can go at least. In fact, sky is not even our limit, it's just the beginning. May you continue to be with us, guide us, and provide for our needs. But for those that can recite it, please. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And, and, and moderator, on, on the latter mood, is that no I just have. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm thinking that you for lunch. Uh, woman leader. So I'm waiting for approval. No item seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this this Zoom Zoom meeting is short changing a lot of it's just short changing certain things. But don't worry, that's like that is item seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. you, can monetize, you can monetize it. You just send it out. I tell you, I send it to it for you. Thank you very much. I tell you, will be sent to the president virtually. Online. Yes, sir. thank you so much. Thank you. Much. <laughs> First verse, no, second verse, no problem. I wait for it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.